Nada más. Good afternoon. Today is Good afternoon. Today is Wednesday, June 16th, 2021. This is the City of Flint's Administrative Hearings Bureau or Blight Court. My name is Attorney Torshell Feaster. I am the Administrative Hearings Officer or Blight Court Judge. Present, we have our uh, Administrative Hearings Clerk or Blight Court Clerk, Ms. Alyssa Olveras. And present, we have uh, one of our Neighborhood Safety Officers, NSO Carol Martin. We are prepared to call our 1.30 p.m. docket. Um, we do have a resident on the phone. Ma'am, which address are you here for to, to, to deal with? 4816 Edwards Avenue. Okay, 4812 Edwards Avenue. 4816 Edwards Avenue. Uh -huh, and 4812. I, don't I own the lot next door to me. I don't believe 4812 is on our docket for today. But 40, right. 48, no, 4816 is on the docket. So 4816 is. Uh, what is your name, ma'am? Cynthia Johnson, but you guys got me under Fred Kleinschrod. He had this house 35 years ago before he died. I've been here ever since. And so when Carl Martin uh, looked up my uh, tax information, he got uh, Fred Kleinschrod instead of me, and I'm on the, all the papers. I have a legal deed and everything. Okay, so you're the owner and the occupant? Yes. Okay. All right, so what we'll do is we'll call your property first, since you're present today. Uh, then we'll allow you to speak to NSO Martin, and then... We'll see if you two are able to resolve the matter. And if you are unable to resolve the matter, I'll come back and we will discuss how we can move forward. Okay. Okay. So let's call the- Will you please turn that down? Let's call the address at 4816 Edwards, which is yes. file number EN2006253, alleged code violation of 39-7 which is the duty of the property owners to keep the premises clear from litter. The owner occupant there, as says on our records, is Fred and Mamie Kleinschrod. But on right. home, we have a Cynthia Johnson who says that she is an owner and an occupant at that address. According to the court records, hmm, Looks like we were here back in February of this year to address uh, this ticket. Uh, looks like it was adjourned. Uh, service obviously is completely correct because we do have a resident here on, on the phone. Uh, what we'll do at this time is I will provide the photos from the file that were provided by NSO Martin at the last hearing date back to him so that Ms. Johnson and Mr. and NSO Martin could have a discussion about the status of this property. So I'm gonna take the camera there and I'll step out to give you all some privacy. Thank you. All right. Ms. Johnson. Hello. Hello. Yeah, Carl Martin. Yes, Carl Martin here. Good afternoon. All right. Um, this is Cynthia Johnson. I own the house. I've had it 35 years. Okay. Fred Kleinschrod has been dead 30 something years. Okay. Um, but um, as far as the property goes, we moved all the uh, branches. I planted my garden. We moved all the uh, scrap metal out of the yard, the riding lawnmower. We moved the doghouse back. We moved the two cars from across the street. We moved the one that was on the street. And um, we still got some more stuff left to do. Right. But my son was in a car accident. <laughs> he wrecked his my, black truck. Right. And that's, you're, you're correct. There's more to be done here because, you know, that, that yard has been demolished by your son. Yes. And it's become an eyesore to the entire neighborhood. Yes. 
And I unfortunately, agree. you know, every time we've tried to address it, since we have uh, legally tagged those vehicles for removal, I mean, we had to, we had actually had to tie up police resources because of the actions of your son and the ridiculousness of, you know, his behavior. And we discussed right. the last time I was out there. Right. So I'm glad to see that we're making progress, but what I have before me is I have, you know, the conditions of the property and I was out there not too long ago and I can see that you've made some improvements, but still uh, it's not where it needs to be. And it, this has been an ongoing issue now for several years. No, so, not several years. My property hasn't been like that. I keep gardens in my yard. I plant flowers. I even mow my neighbor's lawn. No, not several years. This has only been like that since uh, the coronavirus hit and he moved in with me because he lost everything because of the coronas. And uh, he that's only been since that last March and he didn't start messing up the yard until it started getting so spring. But no, my yard ain't never looked like this. I've always, always kept a beautiful manicured yard. So I think that's what, I think that's what we would like to get back to. So the reason that you were issued these tickets is, you know, and we saw the pictures, uh, the conditions were depl deplorable. Right. I agree. Okay. So I guess my, my, my position is that because it was deplorable, uh, the tickets were justified. Um, we have not taken any further actions, giving you a little bit more time to get it looking better. Those vehicles, okay. are, the, those vehicles He's are supposed to be moving. And when he goes, all this crap is going to. Well, and when is that going to happen, ma'am? Well, that's what I've been trying to pin down, trying to get him to tell me when, and he's working on it. Okay. So, you know, um, like I said, because it is such an eyesore and because Vehicles are in violation of the city ordinances. Um, right. You know. Um, well, I you're not lying. I told him that the last time I was on court with him, I told him he was right. You know, I didn't right. argue with you. I agree with you 100 percent. Right, right, right. And I appreciate that. And I appreciate that. So uh, I, I think where we're at, you know, we're just going to talk about the, the justification here for this ticket, uh, as we both agree was justified. So I, you know, I don't think that the, that we're going to move off in terms of the ticket. I, I think that 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 is fair. I think one hundred ten dollars, right? Uh, um, I got. I have to look at the ticket uh, closely. Um, and uh, I believe it was. I believe it was one hundred dollars. I don't think it was one hundred. Yeah, but there's a ten dollar fee. Right, yeah, right, no, right. Just, right. So it's one hundred. I can mail that. Uh, I can mail that to the address on this paper, right? Well, yeah, actually, the, the, the Blight Court clerk will, will, will actually uh, tell you exactly what the process is. So setting that aside, I think we come to agreement in terms of paying for this ticket. I, I'm, I want to now turn and address the issue of the, these vehicles. As you know, uh, we could go back in there. There are vehicles that haven't moved initially from from the time that we actually tagged them and we were well right. within means to go in go in with a with a police officer and actually go in and impound those vehicles now i don't want to do that but i need some assurance from you that within the next i believe what's fair is within the next month every one of those yeah, vehicles i are believe you're going to have to do that that's the only way to get rid of it is actually which is what we tried to do initially but we had such resistance and such right. excuses and such, you know, nefarious ideas of being picked on. And, you know, you know, I don't want to right. get into that in, on the record here, but it was very offensive to somebody like myself that uh, it, it really bothers me that somebody would go to the extreme of talking about racism and all that. And, you know, it's all about the rules that we all have to live by in the city. And that's not just something that's, being necessarily targeted at this uh, youth who has some very bad ideas and the manner that he chooses to try to resolve conflicts are just not positive. But that being right. said, if I were to give you a month 
Could you work I, on making sure that you get those vehicles out of there, whether you have to call the tow trucks yourself and pay for them to be moved? Because if I, I if we go back in there next month, uh, there will be certainly, uh, you know, I want to avoid a conflict here. And I believe that your son is just really begging to go to jail. Yes. I mean, yes. he's begging. And I, I want to try to avoid that. I want to de-escalate this. I want to avoid it. I don't want to engage in it. So if we can work together within the next month and you do what you need to do, and only you have the opportunity to maybe reach him where I can't, I mean, I can't work with him. I can work right. with him, but I can't work with him. I don't even think I can even work with his dad. His, I know. Does his mind? You know what I go through. Well, his mind is bent in the same in the same realm. That being said, could you at least come to the agreement today? Could we work together to de-escalate this? Because I don't like what is possibly, based on my long experience and many years of having a badge and working in a lot of places. I don't like where this is going with him. I'm trying to avoid having to have this uh, individual arrested and and then we're going into the court system. Right. So would a month be sufficient for you to yes. get those vehicles out of there? So if we can get the vehicles out of there, I know you've made some improvements to the property. I think once the vehicles go and all those, uh, you know, miscellaneous auto parts and, you know, the, the garbage and debris that's there, uh, you know. Um, yeah, we got the, that up with uh, the pallets and the tools and the kids' toys now. Every time I pick them up, I have them picked up, um, they all get thrown again. Right, right. So, so basically, I think your best solution is actually that he moves out obviously and yes. the, the vehicles go and then all the other stuff i'm not going to worry so much about the toys but i am about the garbage and the and the auto parts that that will be an issue but we can deal with that later i think the biggest i saw right now are the fact that he has these inoperable vehicles they've been sitting realistically all of them from what i could see are where we tagged them way back when right uh, i will hate to have to go in there and have to go in there with a police uh, presence. And, you know, I kind of backed off the last time that we were there with the police, but I'm not going to be backing off if we have to go back in there. And all right. I'm saying is I'm going to try to deescalate this. I, I hope that you will work with me and make sure that within a month from today. So today is the 16th. So I'm talking... July, by July 16th, 17th, thereabouts. Uh, let's just get these vehicles gone. Let's get him gone. Let's get him, you know, out of this uh, conflict that is not going to end well. And, right. You know, the next time he interferes with me or the other officers, I'm just telling you that that it's not going to be tolerated. I don't blame you there. Okay. And then the same goes with your husband as well. So. Right. So what I'm saying is, I think if we come to agreement, we've, we're gonna settle on payment of this, of this fine. And then I'm gonna give you a month. We won't be out there. We won't do anything for a month. And I'm just gonna let you, you know, do what you can. And then after, afterwards, if, if those vehicles are still there and there's been no movement, then we're gonna have to do what we have to do. And unfortunately, if he wants to um, go to jail, we're gonna accommodate him. He cannot be threatening us. He cannot be, you know, menacing us. And, right. and, and, you know, and, you know, and the issue of, you know, <clears throat> labeling us to be something that we're not. Right. Know. I, I mean, agree has, with yeah, you. He has free, he has free speech, but, but he can't be threatening and he's already crossed the line. So, right. Okay. So, All right, so I'll pay the $110 yes, on the third and, uh, and we'll get them cars out of there in the next couple of weeks and get the car parts up. And, right. uh, right. That, that will, I, I, like I said, I think that's the last piece. And if we can, do that, then we can, then we can work on over time, getting all that stuff out of, out of, 
out of the yard. And if you do that out of the yard, uh, and when we return the yard to the way that you once had it, um, then I think we've accomplished the goals. And if we can avoid conflict or possible harm to uh, anybody, including you know uh, your son, your husband, myself, and the other officers and the police officers, I think that that's a win for all of us. Right. Do you have any questions of me? No, sir, you did the very good. All righty, thank you. All right, thank you, ma'am. So I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to go, and I'm, I will bring, bring the judge back in, and, and then we're going to go on the record, and uh, we're going to basically lay out that we've come to some agreement uh, that this ticket is valid, and you will, you will be paying the fine to the city, and then I, we're going to also put on the record that we have an agreement that within 30 days, those vehicles that are in the yard will be removed. Okay. Okay. And then the other stuff we can work on over time. But like I said, I think that's going to be the biggest, uh, I think that's going to be the biggest issue, the biggest hurdle we have to overcome. And, you know, and, uh, and then that should not, once that happens, we should not have any more conflict with your son or your husband. Right. Very good. All righty, ma'am. So if you give me a second, I'm going to get the judge. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. All done, Carl. All done. Oh, I think you heard. Yep, yep, yep. All done. All done. All right. I'll send them back down. All right. He's on the way. Okay. Thank you. We'll get this all taken care of. Thank you, sir. And yes, thank you. You say, are you ready to go back on the record? We're ready. Yep. Okay. We'll go back on the record. And the address of 4816 Edwards. Uh, that is file number EN2006253, alleged code violation of 39-7, which is the duty of the property owner, which is free for the letter. The owner operator there is, it says Fred and Mamie uh, Kleinschrude, but we have on the phone Ms. Cynthia Johnson, who says she is an owner and operator at the property. Thank you. Present via the phone, we have Ms. Johnson, uh, we also present in the courtroom have neighborhood safety officer Carl Martin. I'm going to swear you both in, and then we're going to determine where we are in this matter. And so, Martin, do you swear to the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Uh, Ms. Cynthia Johnson, do you swear to the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you very much. You had the opportunity to speak to NSO Martin. Uh, NSO Martin, where do we stand based on those conversations? Based on those conversations with Ms. Johnson, we've agreed that this is valid. Ms. Uh, Johnson, did, were you able to hear uh, much of what NSL Martin was saying? No, but uh, I, we already talked, so I got the gist of it. Okay, well, what he said, I want to make sure I, I reiterate it so you hear it and understand it. Uh, he says that uh, he's uh, asking, you, you've agreed for a 30-day extension to give you an opportunity to have the vehicles that are on the property removed. Uh, and at that time, uh, he's hopeful that we can resolve this matter in a favorable matter, matter, manner for you. Is yes. Like what you discussed? Yes. Okay. So we'll come back here sometime near the end of July. And if you're able to have the property uh, 
as those vehicles were moved and parts were moved, as NSO Martin and you have discussed, then I would be willing to uh, entertain a, a dismissal or reduction of this ticket uh, if that is what NSO Martin uh, is recommended. So, uh, Okay, so, so, we, so we would, so we agree, Ms. Johnson agreed with myself that she was willing to pay the fine. Okay. And then, but the group would be able to pay the group. In the future? Yeah, for the future. Okay. Because we've had, uh, we've had a lot of conflict there. Okay. Uh, with her son. And her okay, all right. So let, let me uh, correct what I just said, Ms. Johnson. Sounds like you're going to pay the initial ticket uh, that seems to be totaling, looks like $110. Right. Uh, I'll know that out the third. Thank you. And then uh, after that is, uh, during the next 30 days, you're going to work on removing the vehicles and parts from the property. Uh, that, yes. that way you will uh, be less likely to receive any additional tickets that could run your total up to a much higher amount due to the city of Flint. That sound accurate? Right, I'll have them moved. Okay, all right. So uh, based on that, we'll just expect your payment on the first ticket and we can uh, put a control date out for 30 days so that we can determine, uh, see where you are then and know that you are hopefully then in compliance with the ordinance and are able to avoid uh, any future tickets. That's Very all. good. Okay. Sounds good to me. Okay. Thank you for joining, jumping on the call. We'll see you in 30 days. All right. Thank you. All right. You'll get a notice from the court. All right. Let's move back to the top of the docket. The next address we seem to have is the address at 2761 Golfside, file number EN1704629, alleged code violation of 39-7 which is the duty of the property owners to keep the premises free from litter. The owner operated there will be a Barbara Walker. It does appear from the file that there were two tickets entered for the total of $75. Uh, there's no one present on the call, no one has contacted our offices. It is now after 2 p.m. This matter was set for 1.30 p.m. As a consequence of their non-appearance, I am prepared to enter a default judgment in this file should the facts support such a finding. To that end, we have NSL Carl Martin, who is present. He is still under oath. I'll ask him what evidence he has, if any, that might support a default judgment in this file. Your Honor, the evidence that I have is currently not in the file. Address, okay. And that's the only evidence that we have. Okay. Uh, okay. And if I, record. Okay. And I recall that, that there was a trash litter and debris on that property. Right. Okay. And that's what was in the photographs. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Based on your testimony and the evidence, any evidence to support that, I do find support finding that there was a violation of 39-7 and that a default judgment is appropriate. We'll enter a default judgment in the amount of $75 to the city of Flint. There's a state mandatory cost of $10 or a grand total of $85. We'll send judgment out to the appropriate parties and that will resolve that issue for that file for today. The next day we have is the Excuse me, the next address we have is the address at 3822 Wisner, file number EN1810006, alleged code violation of 39 7, excuse me, 31 7. I believe that. Let me see if I have that file here. Okay, that, that's the. Uh, that's the noise ordinance. The noise ordinance, right, for right, okay. And if I may. Look, uh, before you tell me what happened, okay. Well, hold on one second. Uh, the owner operator there is a Terrence Black. Mr. Black is not present here on the call. He has not contacted our offices. Service appears to be completely correct. No one has uh, appeared. This matter was set for 1 30. It is now after 2 02. As a consequence of non appearance, I am prepared to enter a default judgment in this file should the fact support such a finding. To that end, we have NSO Martin who is present and under oath. I'll ask him what evidence he has if any to support a default. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Um, the evidence that I have is on 10 11 7, uh, 2017. Uh, a ticket was written by the flight director, Raul Garcia, okay. concerning the running of the generator at, after 9 p.m. Okay. It was a 
Lyle engineer with City Noise Over. And uh, it appears that it was a consistent problem because there was also a follow-on afterwards that was uh, that was done, and he was and he was basically following this on a year later that he was still running that generator in violation of city ordinance. So is there anything there? Uh, all, what we have, yep. Yeah, what I have is the is the is a copy of the original tickets that were issued. Thanks. And so um, uh, Raul Garcia, the assistant. Um, White uh, assistant went out a year later and wrote another ticket concerning that generator being run. Okay, I see. Past that. the city ordinances. And these are records kept in the ordinary course of business? Yes. Okay, we'll accept these uh, tickets and whoever this added to the file. I do see there is a ticket issued uh, by Mr. Garcia from 10 11 17 and a follow up ticket by Mr. Adam. Schumacher, 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 Schumacher. Schumacher uh, from. It appears to be. Uh, appears to be a year later. Yeah, it's like yeah. I, I see like one eleven eighteen. Yeah. Uh, so based on these records and the testimony from NSO Martin, I do find support finding was a violation of thirty thirty one dash seven zero. Uh, the total amount I see due is seventy five dollars to the city of Flint. There is a state cost of ten dollars for a grant total of eighty five dollars. We'll send those to the appropriate parties, and that will resolve that file for this afternoon. The next matter on the docket is the address at 2713 Clio Road, file number EN170-4404, alleged code violation 39-7, which is the duty of the property owners to keep the premises free from litter. The owner operator there would be a James Fitch. It does appear from the file that we were here I'm sorry, that I signed a default, in, uh, excuse me, a notice of hearing in this matter back on the 2nd of June of this year for 1.30 p.m. This matter was set for 1.30, now after 2.04 p.m. No one has contacted our offices. No one has appeared for court. Based on their non-appearance, I am prepared to enter a default judgment in this file should the fact support such a finding. To that end, we do have NSO Martin who is still present, still under oath. I'll ask him what evidence he has, if any, who will support a default judgment in this file. Your Honor, um, you have a copy of the file in your possession. And this particular address, uh, Mr. Finch, I have been, um, as we speak, we've been condemned by the code enforcement okay. officers of the city. Okay. He has no running water in either property that he owns, but he actually lives in a camper. Oh. And there's an addition of uh, several trailers as well. Okay. Because there's no running water, um, this the complaints of have been consistent from the neighbors over a couple of years uh, period. Um, they are uh, they are dumping human uh, human feces and urine uh, into the sewer system or out to the backyard of these properties. Okay. Uh, they are also littering in terms of um, having items of questionable value. It's been an ongoing problem. Okay. Then there's the uh, the issue of the of the trailers affecting rodents. And it's it is uh, come to the you know to the attention of the of, of the, the mayor's office. As such, uh, they recently filed and were granted by the judge um, the order to condemn those properties because they don't have any running water. Okay. And currently, uh, there is a there is a uh, attempt to eventually go in and actually remove Mr. Finch. And the uh, female that cohabits with them at the trailer off that property, as well as um, going ahead and impounding the vehicles and the trailers, and actually having street maintenance come in and try to straighten up as much as it can happen for the sake of the adjoining neighbors on either end of that property. Okay. Well, thank you for your testimony. Obviously, this situation is unacceptable, uh, which is why it was condemned. Uh, your testimony does support the finding. So on the fact that uh, ordinance seven was uh, violated, uh, Mr. Fitch has not appeared to defend himself in this matter. Based on your testimony and evidence prov uh, provided, I do find support finding that uh, the violation uh, 39-7 did occur and that a default judgment is appropriate. The total amount I see due is $25 to the city of Flint with the mandatory state cost of $10 for a grand total of $35. If the default judgment in that amount, send those to the appropriate parties, and that will resolve that file for this afternoon. 
The next matter on the docket is the address at 809 East Holbrook, file number EN2106058, alleged code violation of 39-7, which is the duty of the property owners to process free from litter. The owner operator there is a Michael Watson. It does appear from the file that I did sign a notice of hearing in this matter on the 25th of May. Uh, service must be completely correct. No one has appeared for the hearing today. No one is on the call. No one has contacted our offices. As a consequence of non appearance, I am prepared to enter a default judgment in the file should the fast support such a filing. To that end, we have and then some uh, Martin who is still present and still under oath. I'll ask him what evidence he has, if any, that will support a default judgment in this file. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Um, <clears throat> we, have, uh, we have gone to this property on numerous occasions over uh, several years. Mr. Watson is a known hoarder. Oh. At, Two properties that he owns. It is uh, it has become worse as opposed to become better. And um, because of the nature of the many times that we have visited, and also the condition that the property is currently in, uh, he was given a, a third flight ticket for trash and debris. Because not only has he been trashing his own properties, the ones that he owns. Both of them. He's also now has extended it. And if I may approach the bench and yes. present this as evidence. So those are the pictures. Those are the current pictures. The photographs of, that, uh, that you took. That I took. Yes. Okay. Yes, well, I took, yes. Accept the photographs and add them to the file. Right. And as you can see, Your Honor, when reviewing those those photographs, you're going to notice that that uh, there is a trash and debris actually adjacent to that uh, address of eight eight oh nine. East Oldbrook and 805 East Oldbrook. That particular property is actually not owned by Mr. Watson. It's actually land bank property. And it is and it has become so congested that it's going back into the field, almost taking up uh, the distance onto the other street. It looks like a like a garbage dump. Yes, yes. It, 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 much, it, it is. Okay. It is. And in talking with the neighbors. They are, you know, they're very uh, upset, and and they are not happy. I understand why. And, yeah, yeah. And and Mr. Watson, we have tried to work with them. We have urged them to to clean it up, to stop cleaning it up. He, I mean, he's a amicable type of individual, you know. Yes. But but it still does not negate the damage that he's doing to the neighborhood, and it is a it is an eyesore as well as a health hazard. Um, you know, and I've cited him before. Uh, he also has uh, dogs, and you know, he has numerous dogs. He, he lives in one of these houses. Yeah, he lives in one of these houses. Yeah, okay. periodically. I think he also lives somewhere else. Yeah, but they, they don't look uh, livable. No, they don't. But okay. according to him, he lives in one of them. Okay. We've never, we've never fully validated that, or does any owns it? Okay. But as you can see by the pictures, I mean, there's, there's so much. Trash now and debris and yeah. items of questionable value that is actually spilling over into property that he doesn't own. I understand. But yet now he is, now he is the, the, the main occupant of that property. I understand. Thank you for the evidence and testimony, NSO Martin. Um, looking at the photographs, I do have several uh, black and white photographs that do show mounds of trash uh, in the, I believe this is the front yard of these properties. Uh, and it goes around the side, and I can't tell based on how high the mound is if it goes into the backyard or not. Uh, I can just tell there are mounds of trash. Uh, the homes all appear to be at least partially boarded up or have windows bursted out of them. Um, yeah, this definitely will be a violation of 39-7, and frankly, I, I would say unacceptable. Uh, based on the testimony provided by Mr. Martin and the photographs to support that testimony, I do find support that there is a violation of 39-7 and that a default, default judgment is appropriate. The total amount that I see due based on the, the, the three tickets is $200 to the city of Flint. There's a mandatory state cost of $10 for a grand total of $210. I'll enter a default judgment in that amount and send notes to the appropriate parties. That will resolve that file for today. The next matter on the docket 
is the address at 1352 Fox uh, Forest Hill. Um, Final end one seven zero three six eight nine alleged code violation the thirty one dash eighty one which is the city's blood catch all violation and thirty nine dash forty three which is the accumulation of gross of weeds grass harmful vegetation being a nuisance the owner operator there will be a Candace Luxton it does appear from the file that I just signed a notice of hearing in this matter back on the tenth of April of this year service appears to be completely correct. No one has contacted our office on this file. No one has appeared today for this hearing. It is now after 2.13. This matter was set for 1.30 p.m. As a consequence of their non-appearance, I am prepared to enter a default judgment in this file should the fact support such a finding. To that end, we do have NSO Martin who is still present and still under oath. I'll ask him what evidence he has, if any, that might support a default judgment in this file. Mr. Chairman, on 829.2017, and then so James Waterford had done up this uh, property following up on the previous warning concerning the type of the uh, grass that was at the property well well above the eight inches allowed by city ordinance. Mm -hmm. Grass had not been mowed uh, in the rear of the property and all previous warnings and the tickets posted were not addressed. And therefore um, he again issued a, a ticket on this date uh, based on Conditions of the lawn at the time, since it had not been uh, mold uh, up to that point. Thank you. That I do have the, the ticket from uh, NSO uh, Waterford. Uh, the desk says that the lawn had not been mold. Uh, there have been previous warnings, and that there was, and based on uh, NSO Mark's testimony, there was uh, uh, other trash and debris in violation of the ordinance. I do find support finding that there was a violation of 39 81 and 39 43, and that a default, default judgment is appropriate. The total amount that I see due is $75 to the city of Flint. There's a mandatory state cost of $10, $10 for a grant of $85. Well, is there a default judgment in that amount? Send notes to the appropriate parties, and that will be a resolve that file this afternoon. The next, uh, the next, uh, Address on the docket is the address at 2205 Bagley Street, file number EN 1804641, alleged code violation of 31-81, which is the city's black catch-all violation. The owner operated there, excuse me, and it's 39-7, which is the duty of the property owner to the premises free from litter. The owner operated there is a, a Carmen M. King Kingsley. It does appear from the file that I signed the judgment in this matter uh, excuse me, not a judgment, a notice of hearing on the 11th of April of this year. Uh, no one has contacted our office on this file. No one has appeared on today's court date. This matter was set for 1.30 p.m. and it's now after 2.15 p.m. As a consequence of the not appearance, I am prepared to enter the full judgment in this file should the fast support such a finding. To that end, we do have NSL Martin, who is still present, so under oath. I'll ask him what evidence he has, if any, that will support a default judgment in this file. Your Honor, I'm... 117 2018, uh, NSO David Waterford had gone out to the property and he had found uh, litter and miscellaneous items of questionable value, both on the driveway and behind the residence. He had also posted a previous warning prior to this date. And if so please the court, I will approach the bench and I will enter the pictures and Thank evidence. You very much. I'll leave it for the take of by Mr. Waterford. Yes. Okay. And kept in the ordinary course of business. All right. So right. I will accept these photographs into the file and uh, into evidence added to the file. I do have a nine pack of photographs showing items of questionable value uh, all up and down the driveway area of this property. Uh, there's more alongside of the house, it looks like boxes, cardboard, wood. There's a vehicle with the hood up that appears to be inoper inoperable. More items of questionable value throughout the property covered by snow. Uh, the home address of 2205 are fixed on top of the, the door here and a citation taped to the out, outer door. There's a second pack of uh, one photograph showing more of the same with a person in the photograph standing in front of that truck to the first be inoperable. Based on the testimony provided and the evidence to support that testimony, I do find support for finding the limit violation 39 81 and 39 7. Uh, based on that, the total amount that I see due is 
Seventy five dollars for the city of Flint is a mandatory state cost of ten dollars for a grand total of eighty-five dollars. We'll enter a default judgment in that amount, send those to the appropriate parties, and that will resolve that file for today. So the next matter on the docket for today is the address at 939 Pettibone, file number EN 1703632, alleged code violation 39-7, which is the duty of the property owner to get the premises free from litter. The owner operator there is a Tanique Benton. It does appear that I signed a notice for hearing on this matter back on the 10th of April of this year for 1.30 p.m. It is now after 2.18 p.m. No one is present on the call. No one has contacted our offices. Service appears to be completely correct. As a consequence of their non-appearance, I am prepared to enter a default judgment in the file should the facts support such a finding. So that then we have NSL Martin, who is still present and still under oath. I'll ask him what evidence he has, if any, that might support a default judgment in this file. NSL Martin? Yes, Your Honor, thank you. Um, in this particular case, at this address, uh, 929 Petty Bowling Avenue, we had uh, three MSOs that had visited the properties on different occasions. And, and at uh, the time, they found correction free on the property in violation of the city's ordinances. Mm -hmm. They also had instructed that the property needed to be cleaned up, so we posted warnings as well. They were ignored. And to that end, I'd like to approach the bench and submit for your review both the dailies and the pictures of the property in question as they as they documented their visits and taking pictures of the condition of the property at each time. Okay, these are the photographs kept in the ordinary course of business. Yes. Okay, I will accept these uh, photographs into the uh, evidence added to the file. I do have um, many different photographs showing property that is just disgusting. Um, it's got uh, litter and debris all across the yard here. Um, toys, wood, beer cans, uh, bottles, uh, paper, uh, uh, plastic bags, and other items uh, just all across the property. Um, I see a picture with a citation in it. I see a vehicle um, parked next to what a picture of a garage or something. Um, just trash everywhere. Um, yes, this is a, a definitely a problem property, definitely an issue. I do have the delis uh, showing showing that someone did go visit the property in question and the damn time in question. And so based on the evidence provided and the testimony by NSL Martin, I do find sport findings with a violation of 39-7 and that a default judgment is appropriate. The total I see due is $225 due to the city of Flint. There's a state cost of $10 for a grand total of $235. We'll enter a default judgment in an amount and send a notice to the appropriate parties. That's all we have for that file for today. The next matter on the dock is the address at 734 West Antherton, file number EN2104254, alleged code violation 39-7, which is the duty of the property owners to premises free from litter. The owner operator there is a David Stoker. It does appear from the file that I signed a notice of hearing on this matter back on the 25th of May of this year for 1.30 p.m. So it's now after 2.21. No one has appeared. No one has contacted our offices. Service appears to be completely correct. As a consequence of their non-appearance, I am prepared to enter a default judgment on this file should the facts support such a finding. To that end, we have NSL Martin who is still here, still under oath. I'll ask him what evidence he has, if any, that might support a default judgment in this file. NSL Martin? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. On 325, 2021, NSL James Dixon had visited the property. He had posted a warning concerning the violation of Trash and debris that was filed in the driveway. Um, and, and he noted also that there was a previous warning that was ignored uh, about the same issue. Uh, on this date, he also documented in his, uh, in the course of a normal business in his log, the condition that he found the property in, and he was not a copy here in. I was about to approach. Thank you. Uh, the bench and submit these exhibits. For, for your Thank review. you. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah. 
I'm going to accept these into uh, evidence into the file based on the testimony from NSL Martin. I do have a wide shot of the property that does show the grass uh, did it see the uh, city ordinance, although I don't think he was ticketed for that. Uh, I also do see some trash and debris in this black and white photograph. Uh, I do have a daily log showing uh, that NSO Dixon did visit the property on the day and time in question, and he noted that he did still see uh, trash and debris on the parkway, no progress. Based on the testimony provided and the evidence to support that testimony, I do find support finding the violation 39.7 and that a default judgment is appropriate. The total amount to do is $50 for the city of Flint. There's a state cost of $10 for a grand total of $60. We'll enter a default judgment in that amount and send those to the appropriate parties. That is all we have today in terms of new cases for NSO Martin. If you want to stay here, you can. If you want to go back there, you can. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but thank you so much for uh, your appearing and thank testimony you, today. Thank okay. You, thank you. Okay. We're going to move down the docket and try to finish the stuff up. Uh, the next portion is the late fee portion. And the first address we have there is the address at 1730 Montana, file number EN 2106056 alleged code violation 39-7, which is the duty of the property owner to the premises free from litter. The owner operator there is a Grand Tree Investors LLC. It does appear from the file that I did sign a judgment in this matter back on the 2nd of June of this year for $110. That was to be paid by yesterday's date or they were to have appeared here today at 1.30 p.m. to explain why it's not been paid. There is no one present on the call, no one to contact our offices. Payment has not been made. Service must be completely correct. It is now after 2.24 p.m. It's now set for 1.30. Based on those factors, I do find that this matter needs to be needs to uh, have a late fee assessed, adding a $25, $25 late fee to the previous total of $110 for a new grand total of $135. We'll send notice to the appropriate parties, and that will we'll resolve that file for this afternoon. The next matter under the late fee section is the address of 2836 Concord, file number EN 1804677, alleged code violation 31-81, which is the city's black catch-all violation. The owner operator there is an Allison Snell. It does appear from the file that I did sign a judgment in this matter back on the 2nd of June of this year for $410. That was to be paid by yesterday's date, or they were to have appeared here today at 1.30 p.m. No one has appeared today. No one has contacted our offices. Service is completely correct. Payment has not been made. It is now after 2.25 p.m. This matter was set for 1.30. As a consequence of those facts, I do find that a late fee is appropriate. We'll add $25 to the previous total of $410 for a new grand total of $435. We'll send notice to the appropriate parties, and that will resolve that file for this afternoon. The next matter on the docket is the address at 3. I'm sorry, we're moving down to the collection section of the docket. The next port uh, address is at 3446 Bar, file number EN1804425, alleged code violation of 39-7, which is the duty of the property owners to keep the premises free from litter. The owner operator there is a DZ Property Investments LLC. It does appear from the file that I did sign a judgment in this matter on the 2nd of June of this year for $85. That was to be paid by yesterday's date or the original appeared here today at 1.30 p.m. to explain why it's not been paid. A late fee of $25 has already been assessed. Service appears to be completely correct. No payment appears to have been made. This matter was set for 1.30 p.m. It's now after, uh, after 2.26 p.m. As a consequence of the non-appearance, non-payment, and the other factors I noted, I do find that this matter needs to be referred to the collection department so the collection can determine how they want to see the floor with this file. It is so referring. The next line of the docket is the address of 5617 Edwards, file number EN 2003526, alleged code violation of 39 7, which is the duty of the property owner to keep the premises free from litter. The owner operator there is the World Christian Foundation. It does appear from the file that I signed a judgment in this matter on the 2nd of June of this year for $185. That was to be paid by yesterday's date, or the which have appeared here today at 1.30 p.m. to explain why it has not been paid. There is no one present in the courtroom. No one contacted our offices. Service appears to be completely correct. A late fee has already been assessed. 
payment does not appear to have been made. It is now after 2.27 p.m. This matter was set for 1.30 p.m. Based on those factors, I do find that this matter needs to be referred to collections so the collector can determine how they will proceed forward with this file. It is so referred. The next matter on the docket is the address at 1417 Mason, file number EN 1804751, LS code violation of 31-81, which is the city's blood catch-all violation. The owner operator there is a Bobby McCombs. It does appear from the file that I signed a judgment in this matter back on the 2nd of June of this year for $85. That was to be paid by yesterday's date, and the hotel appeared here today at 1.30 p.m. to explain why it's not been paid. There is no one present on the call, no one to contact our officers. Service appears to be completely correct. Payments is not going to have been made. At least she has already been assessed. It is now after 2.28 p.m. The matter was set for 1.30 p.m. As a consequence of all those factors, I do find that this matter needs to be referred to collections so the collection can determine how they want to proceed forward with this file. It is so referred. The next matter on the docket is the address at 4110 Tuxedo, file number EN1904025, alleged code violation of 39-7, which is the duty of the property owners to keep the premises free from litter. The owner operator is a Michelle Risky. It does appear from the file that I signed a judgment in this matter on or about the 2nd of June of this year for $135. That was to be paid by yesterday's date, or they were to have appeared here today to explain why it's not been paid. Service appears to be completely correct. No one is present on the call. No one has contacted our offices. A late fee has already been assessed. Payment does not appear to have been made. And it is now after 2.29 p.m. This matter was set for 1.30 p.m. As a consequence of all those factors, I do find that this matter should be referred to collection so the collection can determine how they want to proceed forward with this file. It is so referred. And the next matter on the docket is the address of 3825 Holly, file number EN1702889, alleged code violation of 39-43, which is the accumulation of gross of weeds, grass, harmful vegetation, and the nuisance. The owner operator there is a Stephen Walker. It does appear from this file that I signed a judgment in this matter on the 2nd of June of this year for $310. That was to be paid by yesterday's date were to, have, were to have appeared here today at 1.30 p.m. to explain why it's not been paid. There is no one present on the call. No one has contacted our offices. Service appears to be completely correct. A late fee has already been assessed. Payments does not appear to have been made. And this matter was set for 1.30 p.m. It is now after 2.30 p.m. Based on no factor, I do find that this matter needs to be referred to collections so the collection can determine how they want to proceed forward with this file. It is so referred. I believe that was the last matter on our docket for today. Based on that, we are free to go off the record. Thank you, Ms. Olivares.